Straw Hut Media. Hello on the Rockers. Pride Month continues, and it's all about music today with American Idol singer-songwriter David Hernandez to chat about what he's been up to, some sexy stuff, and some hot topics with me, your favorite host with the sassy most. Raise a glass with the drinks begin. It's on the rocks. <laughs> And most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Fasten your seat. It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord have mercy, buttons and bows and pantyhose on the Rocks podcast, the place where we're too glam to give a damn. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at On the Rocks on Air and on Facebook on the Rocks Radio Show. Send me email, book me for a pride, wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris, I don't care, I'll show up. Info at on the Rocks Radio Show.com. Also send us your comments, your guest requests, and your guest questions. The show's presented by Strathead Media. You can watch now our over 380 episodes, by the way, for free. You can watch us on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and the adult.tv app. Facebook Watch, streaming with pride on SVTV and on Channel 31 on the East Coast. We proudly tape at UBN Go Studios, your one-stop place for podcasting. All right, let's get the show on the road because we have a lot to talk about. The man of the hour, David Hernandez, uh, a true self-made artist who gained national attention, is a top 12 finalist on American Idol. His talents have been showcased on notable platforms like The Ellen Show, The Today Show, MTV's TRL, and TV Guide's Sexiest Stars. Uh, beyond his American Idol success, his achievements include performing at the inaugural kickoff celebration ball for Barack Obama alongside little artists like John Legend and Maroon 5. Um, he has toured the world, captivating audience with his soulful powerhouse vocals while simultaneously writing and producing his original music. One of David's notable hits, Beautiful, made its way to the top 100 of the Billboard dance uh, charts. And that's when he came out, by the way, when that song came out. Um, and its music video also became a viral sensation. In this past year, he has released self-produced songs and music videos like Sorry, Kingdom, and the infectious summer anthem bop, Boomerang. And additionally, his album, Don't At Me, is available on all digital platforms. And during the pandemic, he adapted to virtual performances, streaming over 70 shows. And I watched most of them, and it was so amazing. Um, he also completed a successful six-month residency in the off-Broadway uh, musical comedy Naked Boys Singing in New York City, which we're going to talk about that. There's the poster. There he is. Uh, and he won the Broadway World Award for Best Performer in a Musical. And in his most recent single, I Am, he brings his career full circle as he revisits a song from his first EP, Let's take just a little peek at that. Everything that I've been through has made me stronger. Yes, I know it's true. Life can be so demanding. You know it wants to throw a hand in. But I know that I've come so far from where I once started. But every day is a winding road. Sing so I could block it all out. Whoa, whoa. Growing up, not the richest of kids. Single mom, 16. We were, we were, we were more like friends, 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 yeah. Yeah. 
Please welcome David Hernandez. Thank you. <laughs> you know, most of us like, you know, we like look at back at our youth and we're like, oh my God, we were so cute. We were so hot. You look hotter and cuter now. No oh. offense on American Idol. You were like, kind of like a little nerd on American Idol. I was nerdy. You were. Well, I was also like starved on that. Sh <laughs> I feel like we didn't get <laughs> like, any sleep or food. <laughs> Everything was like boot camp. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight during that show. And then I also got like really pale from being indoors. But um, but yeah, I, yeah. I, well, thank you. I mean, I'd like to think that we live longer and look younger these days. And, you know, depending on your lifestyle, you don't want well, to say it. Well, one of us but, is drinking and one of us is not drinking. Yes, so this is very true. Better. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were listing off all that stuff I did, and I've done some really cool stuff. When other people say it, it sounds a lot cooler than when you're in like the thick of the hustle. Yeah, and they're like, you send, know? send me your bio, and you're like, okay, let's yeah, 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 together. Better. Yeah. Well, and I have to tell our audience, you know, I've had the privilege to introduce you at about every different LGBTQ you event. You pop up everywhere. I could be in a different. <laughs> so do you? State. No, but I'll be in a different state, and they'll be like, oh, you're uh, you're uh, in introducing David Hernandez today. And I'm like, oh my god, you are everywhere. And I have yeah. to tell our audience, he sounds that way on stage no matter where he is no matter what state he is no matter what the environment is there's no lip syncing there's like no. it's 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 you like you sound that great yeah live. i set myself up for a very challenging career because <laughs> well, i've always been like no you're singing live you're singing live and so every time i show up come hell or high water i'm singing live yeah well we have some hot topics that we're going to sprinkle in and Ooh. one of them is lip syncing because <clears throat> i mean we, we, we got we got to talk about it we got to do it um, the video for I Am, and we saw a little bit there, uh, opens up with a bunch of images from your past. We see you as a kid. We see the the early idol days. Yeah. Um, and this song is actually a revisit of the title song of your first EP. Yeah. Um, what was the reason to return to this song? Oh, gosh, I I just got a little goosebumps right now. I don't know. I'm so happy to be here and talking to you. And like, here. I don't know. The last it's time. It's not just the vodka. No, it's not. And the last time I was here, I think I was getting drunk with you, actually. I think we were, I was drinking heavily at the time. So I just feel very clear right now. But um, uh, I was on the treadmill in January after the new year, right? And I was just like, what's going to be different about this year? And I started listening to my old, my very first album. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. Yeah. Because I was like, who is this person singing? And it's like an out of body. So many different cycles. So many iterations looks. of David. Yeah. And I'm just like, who was that guy? Yeah. Like, who was that? I literally look at myself in photos and I don't recognize that person because I feel like a whole nother person now. But that I that but that little kid was me. Like that little, you know, that little twink on the show was like pale twink with no muscle. Was Tony, me. do you have a picture of him and David, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my God. Yeah. Th yeah. No, he hasn't aged at all. And I think that you've like matured it in, into your looks. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I appreciate that. Um, now, are you still wearing that same size Mickey shirt? You know, I'm video? not wearing the same size anymore, <laughs> thankfully. I actually, <laughs> no, I actually ordered that shirt. I think it was like a medium or something. And I thought about taking the sleeves in and people were like, no, don't do that. You got to look, you, come on, it's a Mickey Mouse shirt. You're not going to make it a muscle tee. Why not? I was like, yeah, that's a good point. But um, cause I'm, always, I'm, try, I'm always trying to show off what I worked for, you know. If you work hard for it, why not? You know, but there's a, there's always a time and a place. But uh, to answer your question, I was listening to I Am on the Treadmill and I was like, even back then I kind of had the wherewithal to write a song like that and i named my album that because i thought that was sort of like the just like i don't know the groundwork for what was soon to come and i listened to the lyrics and it's so still relevant to me now and i sing it at all of my shows and i've been singing it for you know however many years and so i was like what would this sound like now like what would my voice sound like now i think i've i've definitely my voice has gotten better and matured and so uh, I had my first producer who produced that album. I reached out and I was like, Alex Teamer, I'm like, can you recreate the song? And God, he's like, what a phone call. Well, you know, in the, our age of reboots, you know, yeah. it's like, but this is a reboot of, a reboot. of, of a song, which, which I think is so exciting. And yeah. the whole title was, I, I am who I am. I am who I am and was the whole title of the song, of the album. And then I just was like, I am all like, caps, this is all caps, yeah. all caps. Yeah. And, uh, and so he, he sent me the, he sent me the first like uh, iteration of it. And I was like, yeah, this is fire. Let's just change a couple of things. And then he decided to add that gospel ending. Yeah. And I built oh, the so choir. Powerful. Thank you. I thought so too. And I so I stacked my voice and created that choir. Um and yeah, I think it's I think it sounds like hundred times better oh, than the original. I mean, it's it's so good, but I mean you know, everything yeah. that you've been through life and I mean let's face it, you kinda had a rough childhood. So yeah. you came to the market already with this kind of pathos in your voice. Yeah. But now, you know, we, we've gone through COVID, you've been through so many you know, different areas of your career and done so many things. So you bring even added feelings yeah. to, 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 to the proceedings. Was it bittersweet to look back at that time and kind of revisit? Because the song talks about your childhood. It talks about some of the rough times. Yeah. Was it bittersweet revisiting that? Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, it's, 
it, you know, and when I when I went to go lay the vocals in my home studio, I, when I was singing it, I you know I took a few passes at it because home studio. By the way, that that sounds fancy. Those pitches, yeah. You know. Well, like, I had to during COVID time. You me and a Barbara lot. have the home studio, like home studio. There we go. <laughs> it's so great to have your own studio, though. I can mess up. Like, I can make. Yeah, I can do all the things, and right no one's in. sitting there, like you know, on the clock. Yeah, you won't ever yeah. catch anything being released out there that was like an unedited vocal because I always make sure that I that shit is on lock. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it brought back a lot of memories singing that song again and um honestly when we showed up for the video shoot uh my videographer and co-producer Don, uh, johnny d who's also one of my dancers he uh had created this like montage that you see in the video mm-hmm. of all of these because he had asked me like send me all the videos that you have so my mom sent over like a handful of videos he went and dug up his own on youtube wow. like he found stuff that i have there's never been able to there. see there's a lot of stuff out there yeah. that i have never and i guess some like subconsciously like i kind of don't like looking at it like i don't like looking at the past very much i'm not a big dweller on the past when facebook used to do that like facebook memories thing or maybe they, still i hate me. it it's i don't like, like it i'm not dating that person anymore no this person i'm not has died. yes like, leave me yeah alone. <laughs> leave me alone let me onward and upward so when he when he when we were in this in this studio there's like a huge like psych screen like a cyclorama like for anyone that doesn't know what that is it's a huge white wall and he put it for the projector that he projected it from the screen and it was all these videos of me and i started crying yeah because i was like oh my god like this is so crazy like i, I just it was so nostalgic and it was i that's i liked that version of a throwback that was cool so kudos to johnny he he made that happen that was very cool you got into music and theater, musical theater, very early on, like yeah. like six years old, six or something. seven, yeah. But you had this duality. You were also a gymnast, and you won like titles and and things like that. Yeah. What was it like being a boy, um, <laughs> dealing with that duality? And we talk a lot, especially during Pride Month. We talk a lot about what's expected of a boy. Yeah. So obviously, sports, gymnast. You know, that's a president. But then music and theater was such a big part of your life at such a young, early age before even sexuality was even being talked about. Yeah. How did you deal with that duality, kind of knowing that maybe you were a little different than the other boys? I knew I was different from the beginning. It was so confusing to me because I didn't understand why people like sports so much. <laughs> well, I I'll didn't tell you understand. Why I like it. watching sports, but it's yeah, all I mean, reasons. same. But <laughs> I didn't understand why I had to be on the baseball team or I had to play football or I had I was terrible at all those things. But yeah. I I kept being told that I had to do it because as a boy, like, and then I had to play with G.I. Joes and like I just never understood it so my mom when I would get home she let me do all the things I wanted to I would sing I would audition for musical theater stuff I would play with Barbies like I did all the things that I wanted to do but then when I went to school like I had to hide that part of myself it was hard it was a double life at at six years old because up until then before I started going to school I didn't know that I was different my mom was so incredible, still is. Like she made me feel like everything I was doing was perfectly normal. So when I got to school and I started like, I didn't know that hanging out with the girls was like not supposed to be a thing. You know, I got along with the girls more. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. You probably I, I, can I, I had a single mom. And Same. so um, she she wanted to do what she thought a parent should do. So she got me into soccer, yeah. baseball, and I was so bad at it. And I would cry because I was so miserable. I didn't get along with the other boys Same. because I was besties with my mom. Yeah. And so that older person energy, I, I naturally, I would want to hang out with my teachers other than the students. Me too. And girls too. Yeah. But my mom, you know, she she wanted she wanted me to have the normal experience until she finally was like, why am I pushing this why kid? Are you push- yeah. He's miserable. Yeah. And then that's when the theater and all that started. It, it's such a mind fuck because I just, I remember, I remember, I remember just like wanting to do, I wanted to play the clarinet and the flute so bad, but I had to play the trumpet first because you know, it, it's I, a manlier, because it's a manly, it's a, it's a brass, brass instrument. Or? And like, <laughs> and then finally, when I got around to playing the flute, I started hiding it. Ooh. I would only practice at a home. It's pretty gay. It's, I mean, pretty, it's pretty it's gay. pretty gay. Yeah. I mean, I mean you're still playing the flute. I'm still playing the skin yeah. flute, but I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it it's was just having all these pressures, especially coming from like a Latin home as well. Yeah, we have those machismo pressures as well. Yeah, and my dad was really cool. Like he's a truck driver. He always knew I was different, but he was gone a lot. Yeah. So I was, I had my stepbrother and my stepmom and that whole side of the family, and everybody was super, you know, like they fit their gender assignments. You know yeah. what I mean? And like for me, I always felt like I wanted to, I like for example, gymnastics, right? I spent so much time on the balance beam and that wasn't even a male apparatus. 
<laughs> I hated the male apparatuses. I didn't like the pommel horse. Fuck the pommel horse. Yeah. The rings were so hard. The only thing I liked was the balance beam and the floor exercise. Mm. I love doing flips and I love, I don't know, I thought I was naughty a fucking comb in each. Yeah. Like for the longest yeah. time, I wanted a perfect 10. Yeah. And like that just wasn't going to fly in the real world. So, so I'd bury myself in like fantasy and music and like pretend that I was somebody I wasn't. So what was your coming out story? Was it just kind of like, yeah, we kind of knew or was it a big deal? I mean, some people knew. My mom, always, moms always know. My mom claimed she didn't know. And I was really? like, I mean, I would watch Annie over and over and over again. <laughs> and then I had the best friend in high school who we couldn't, we couldn't spend one night apart. We were always at either his house or my house, even like Christmas Eve. And when you should have been kind of like interested in girls, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I still played that. Like, I, I don't know if you did that too. Like, oh, yeah. You know, I pretended I was interested and went to prom and all of that. You know, yeah, I, I did was, that. Yeah. I did that. I, I was actually, I was interested in girls at that time, though. Like, I felt like I really, and like, I was having sex with girls in high school. I had girlfriends I in high school. I was engaged to be married in, in college. What? Yep. I cannot imagine Alexander being engaged to a woman. I was right now. very, I'm sorry, very different. I, and I was miserable. And I, I just didn't know. But I didn't even have the language growing up, like, gay, you know, because I, I grew up in Orange County. Of course. And on TV and all that it just it, it wasn't something that I even knew the language with I didn't even know what guys would do with each other like you know what I mean yeah I just knew that there was this weird energy yeah but my mom claims that she never knew but for, for you it was my, my mom I remember call, uh, okay so I had a boyfriend we broke up I called my mom crying and I was like mom someone broke my heart and she said what was her name baby because at that point I had only dated girls and I said Shane <laughs> <laughs> and she was like Oh, okay. Well, what happened? And then it went into it. Then she was, I think she had like a deep sigh of relief because she was like, finally, finally. someone's fucking honest with yeah. themselves. I mean, yeah, Jesus, yeah, yeah. like all these, the, the rouge of it all, the ruse of it all. Like, yeah. you know, for years I had like introduced my girlfriends and like, I don't know, I was obsessed with my first girlfriend who was like, a, she was in, was like a pommy. And uh, like, I remember when, when she cheated on me when I went to college, uh, she was still like a senior in high school and I went to college and I found out who she cheated on me with. And I wasn't even mad that that she cheated. I was mad that she cheated on the guy that I wanted to have sex with, the <laughs> quarterback of the football team. Now that would probably be a threesome because these young kids are so free with their sexuality. I mean, she could watch, but I mean, you know, I'm not. Listen, I've seen that movie. That was fresh. <laughs> It's just, it's such a, it's such a, <laughs> the story is so tired now, I, uh, but it's funny when I look back on it, I'm like, really? You weren't mad that she cheated on you? You're just mad that she cheated on <laughs> you with the guy you first. wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, God, David, you're trash. But I mean, <laughs> hey, listen, something's never changed. <laughs> Lord. Um, you had other challenges growing up, not just dealing with your sexuality. There was substance abuse in your family, which you've talked very openly about. Yeah. Can you talk about how that affected your childhood and how did you work through that and not kind of succumb to that environment? Well, um, I'm, you know, I think that later on in life, I would succumb to some of those things. I've battled my own addictions and alcoholism and which is one of the reasons why I decided to go sober again, because, you know, it starts to become unmanageable no matter which way you cut the cake. Um, but you know, me and my mom have had this long discussion, so it's okay that I share this. My mom was addicted to crystal meth for a couple of decades. And, and that's a nasty and drug. And that's a nasty, that's nasty, a nasty, nasty drug. drug. That most that, people cannot find their way out yeah, of Yeah. And it permeates our culture, the gay culture. Yeah. And. Um, my heart goes out to anybody that kicks that because it's insanely, almost almost impossible. Um, but so she did. She kicked it and she did it on her own. I don't know how. I, I, She's been sober for a very long time now. But uh, but I never knew that that was a thing then until until she almost died and my grandmother came into the picture and then I the whole thing sort of unfolded and I was like, oh my God. Like, it did explain a lot of things. Um, so that was like that. And then, you know, on my dad's side, there's, I mean, heavy, heavy alcoholics, you know, and I won't call anybody out, but Latin like, families, I families, mean, we drink a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, hello, my show's called On the Rocks and yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and like, and listen, there's people out there that can pick up a cocktail sensibly and just, ha you know, act like a lady or a gentleman with it. I'm just not that kid, That's you know, like, either. I'm like, like, what do you mean you're bottle. having one? Yeah. Like, we need to have the whole, bo where's the... No Another because, bottle, please. But you know that's know also I mean? like us being part of the gay culture. We just want to enjoy things so much because we were repressed for so much. Yeah. And it's like, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out balls to the wall. But that's also, we're we so insecure things. too yes. in social settings, especially Liquid because courage. We if think we don't funnier, look sexier, like or yes, exactly, yes, yes. if we want that guy, we have to do these things. And you know, and and slow over the years, like you you look back and you're like, oh shit, like I have a I have an issue. Like this shit is like 
you know, it's infecting my whole life. And so, yeah, I think at the time growing up, I just thought like boozing, boozing and drugs were sort of just like, that's part of, I mean, there's always a reason whether it's a funeral it's or a birthday. It's cute when you're a certain like, age and then you get to that age and it's like blacking out is not cute anymore. It's not cute. It's just not fucking yeah. cute anymore. Um, and so, it, so yeah, I think in the moment growing up, I'm just like, well, this is fun. And it gave me a lot of courage. And, and, and then later on in life, you start to realize that like the things that work for you as a kid don't work for you as an adult anymore. And people don't yeah. give you a pass anymore. 100%. So, and David, it must have been really difficult being so close to your mom. And this is what uh, some people don't understand about addiction, especially with meth. It really is a disease and it is the addiction. It's not that somebody doesn't love you enough to choose you over the drugs. It's just no, no, no. Th- that's not part of it. But as a kid, that must have been so hard to, to, to kind of consider yeah. that you were fighting this addiction. You weren't fighting your mom and it's somebody that you're close to and, and love. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, we've done my mom and I are we're best friends still to this day. We've done a lot, a lot of healing. We've had a lot of tough conversations. We will continue to have tough conversations. There's things I want to know about my mom. And we yeah. just had this conversation a week ago where she sent me this this like um, it was like a thing on Instagram where it was like, if you only see your parents once per year and say they only have 20 years left, so then you only see your parents 20 more times before they die like if you put that in a perspective that's so crazy and it got me in my feels and I was like okay when I do Phoenix Pride in October I'm gonna come out for a week and just let's just chill let's cook let's like you know let's she loves like Build-A-Bear and she loves making pottery so we'll go do that you know but like yeah I I feel like there's so much still to like unpack with my mom Um, and it's a beautiful thing when we can just be 100% honest with each other so in a lot of ways like drugs and alcohol were sort of like a, a gateway to connect Activity, or I don't know how to explain it. It's it's it, it kind of made us it it lowers the veil because yeah. you can't hide it for that for so long. Lowers the veil, so then you have the deep conversations like, oh shit, like you know, does this run in my genes because I've had similar issues? And, and yeah, it, it does. Yeah, I know. And there's no scientific proof of it, but I really believe it's a combination of nature and nurture. Um, and there's a reason why like my boyfriend can pick up a beer and be cool with that, and there's a reason why I can't. Like yeah. why I will literally want to sit at the pub and like finish off 10 beers well it's funny because we were coming <laughs> over here and, and you're like oh do you have diet coke or anything and i'm like yeah. oh no i know like because you and i have drank together Honey. we've had a sunday fun day at the abbey like we've done that we have done but you it. have taken it and you know we've been talking about sobriety in the lgbtq community uh very re- recently yeah. because there would be the stigma before that if you came out as sober your friends wouldn't want to hang out with you. Yeah. They wouldn't invite you. You couldn't go to the prides and all that. But that whole dialogue is totally changing. Prides yeah. are now having safe spaces. They're having events that are catered to the the sober community mm-hmm. because we realize how how detrimental it can be for for people. There's the in sober the curious movement that's yep. going on with 100%. a lot of the younger generation. Even better like, rules. Half of them are like sober now, which is insane. I'm telling you, when you go sober, it's a weird thing how the universe is like puts other sober people in front of you because what you just said I have that same fear even now where I'm like people are going to think I'm boring or but there are certain people who are like well you're not drinking ew and I'm like well fine if you don't want to be around me I don't want to be around you anyway but my yeah. dan- on tour on the road my dancers were like you're crazy without alcohol like you're <laughs> Like you're hilarious. Like it's just affirming stuff, and you just got to give it time. Because I, I, I do think that like I am a great person aside from substances. Like I don't need them. There's Somewhere along the lines, I got it twisted, and I thought I needed them. I don't know. But there's definitely th- that transition period. So my ex, yes, and he's still my best best friend. I mean, we have like Paris and Nicole stories about how like drunk <laughs> we would get. I mean, we have tons, Me and tons too. of stories. Yeah. He's sober now nine years. And when he first went sober, I thought I'm going to lose my best friend. And there was there was about a month that it took it took some transitioning because it's like. Yeah. All we used to do was go to WeHo every single night. And you got to get party. creative, figure out cool new things to do. Hiking. And I was like, hiking? Movies? And he has not changed. He is still that crazy person. We yeah. still have crazy memories, making new memories. He's, he's just sober. Yeah. And it's like, we look back and we're like, how did we even survive? But I'm glad that we're having this dialogue as a community and that stigma is is becoming less and less. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. Like, I was just talking about this with my my really close friend, Griffin, um, who's also sober. You have a friend named Griffin? I do. That's a hot name. Griffin's hot. He's a, he's a tall Shane trainer. Or Griffin are, are hot. Yeah, I mean, Griffin's going to like this podcast because he's hot. Griffin's hello, hot. Griffin, hello, you're Griffin. welcome. Um, As I pour but, myself another drink, by but, the way. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's fine. Hey, listen. But um, but um, uh, we were talking about this the other day, and I just lost my train of thought about like being fun and all that kind of Oh, oh, just we've you can't discount the your youth and the times that you've had fun with alcohol yes. there's been i mean listen all of my 20s and early 30s like i had a blast and i think at that time there were it was mostly manageable right for me anyway i can say that and I mean, then I, and, and then like, it became like, how did i survive there were certain things there were certain things yeah certain situations but 
But I, you know, I hate to look back on my past and be like, oh, that was all just a wash. It wasn't. I did yeah. a lot of really cool shit yeah. in my twenties. Well, you know, American yeah. Idol, yeah. Uh, touring. I'm still touring. Like, it's just a lot of cool stuff. It's just that you, at any time, reserve the right to change your mind and change your lifestyle and your behaviors, and that's totally fine. You don't have to discount anything that came before. It made you who you are today. So that's that's my soapbox moment. Uh, well, th- thank thank you for sharing that because I know sometimes it's hard to come out as sober. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, and again, like it's day at a time. I'm not yeah. saying that I'm gonna be sober forever. Yeah. I mean, when you but think for about now, forever, it's the any choice for, for you for right now, yeah. When yeah. you think about forever in any capacity, even being with like your partner or whatever, or, I mean, it sounds fucking scary and makes me want to run for the hills. So that's why it's like one foot in front of the other, one day at a time. Today, yeah. I'm not drinking. Yeah. Tomorrow, who knows? Let's take tomorrow when it comes, yeah. and that's it. The end. Damn it. <sighs> so it's been a number of years since you've been on Idol. And now we have so many reality TV competition vocal shows. Yeah. Having been part of that machine and now being removed, having your own career, wildly successful outside of Idol, what's your take on these reality vocal shows? There just seems so many. Do they have merit? Are we supporting real talent? I think, I do think we're supporting real talent. I do love Abby, who just won American Idol. I think she's so talented. There are a handful of people that have went through the process in the last, I don't know, since I was on, that are definitely talented, yeah. Do I think we're oversaturated? For sure, yeah. But I still love watching American Idol. I really do. Like, I am a huge fan. I I slide into the new contestants' DMs all the time, and I'm like... Do you really? I do. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm an alum. I know I'm not a creepy fucking dad, but I just want to let you know, the best is yet to come. And, they're, and they all respond. That, like, melts my heart a little bit. Yeah, that's it's so cool, because we're part of this, like, really elite little not elite we're part of this really like special group of kids that and it's tough to go and through it's that tough process. to go through it yeah i mean you were put through the ringer through the ringer and yeah. i think at an earlier time it was more through the ringer because yeah. there wasn't mm-hmm. the this idea of sensitivity and mental health and like we yeah. were bawling backstage we were crying you know we were like sweating there was it was just a lot right running like i said on no sleep and stuff so i think now there's a lot probably probably a lot more consideration but entertainment and the real world is still harsh as it was then yeah if not so more because you can social media is at your fingertips and you can see all the negative things and it's there's it's so it's much addicting out there there's so much yeah it's addicting and i remember being on the show and and doing my first performance and then they were like don't look at the comments like all the producers of course, I'm looking at the comments. And the first thing that I saw somebody say that I already thought about myself was he has a crooked nose. And I do. I have a deviated septum and my nose is slightly crooked. It curves to the right. I'm it, looking straight at you and I don't see it at it's all. It's there, honey. Trust me. I've spent enough years in this body. It's there. It ain't going straight. No part of me is going straight. But, <laughs> <laughs> Back into the left. But, um, but, but, but I saw that comment. That's and and mean, out of all the millions of comments yep. that were so That's positive, that is the only one. And you know why? Because I already felt that way about myself. God, so someone terrible. just reaffirmed what I already thought about myself in a negative way. And so since then, there's been a variety of therapists and injuries. <laughs> And I'm still on the journey to really loving myself. I, I that love, journey I don't think ever ends. You don't, don't ever get ever that ends. medal. I don't think it ever ends. I I do think you get to a point where you're sick and tired of yourself and you're like, just shut up. This is you, okay? <laughs> Fuck. You know? And and I think that's where I'm approaching right now. I still take pride in, in making myself look good and self-care and stuff. But there's times where I'm just like, that's not that, that ain't going to change on you, honey. Yeah. That's, that is what you are and you should be. Because the things that you hate about yourself are things that some people wish they had. So be grateful. The, the grass is, 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 is always greener. I mean, yeah. f- for sure. You know, I know, and especially during Pride Month, we're supposed to be out and proud and just like, I'm gay. and You're gay? Everybody, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, when I'm not engaged to be married, apparently. Ooh. <clears throat> well. But the honesty of it, do you think being openly gay has limited your career? Because I know you perform at all these prides around around the globe. Like, you are in it and you're working and... Your music is is so well received, but do you think it has been limiting on a bigger picture? I was just asked that question in Dallas during a meet and greet, and I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, and I'll never know. I mean, here's the thing. The entertainment industry is ran by gays and Jews, so, I mean, I feel like I might be doing something right. (laughs) And I have, you know, I have Hebrew tattoos all over me. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's... It's hard to say. I don't like to fuck with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, or what if. Like, I mean, what's that going to do for me now? Yeah. Um, do I think certain people were turned off by it, especially in the earlier days of me coming out? Sure. But if they didn't want to work with me, I didn't want to work with them either. True. So I don't know. I think we're in a different... We're, we're, we've certainly entered a different time, and I think it's still, you know, we're progressing. Um, but I think, like, I don't know. Like, I think gay people are doing a lot of great, incredible things. 
now the climate uh, I, we're, I think su- we're is, unicorns it's is, is, is different even 10 years ago it was just so so different different yeah. okay that brings us to our first hot topic oh shit we have to talk about this this girl Jojo Siwa <laughs> She just performed at LA Pride. Yeah. She brought a big jug of vodka on stage with her and she oh. dunked it. Her okay. 21st birthday was spent at Disney getting wasted on Instagram Live, whatnot. Really? We know, yeah. We know her problematic interview saying that she wants to, you know, invent gay pop. Pop music, yeah. Um, as a musician, as somebody that's also been, you know, in the media spotlight, is she problematic for the LGBTQ community? Is she problematic for youth? Or is she just living her life and we should applaud her? <sighs> There's so many other things we can be focused on besides JoJo Siwa. You know, I think but she's... But the media's focused, obsessed about Well, that's the media's fucking fault. I mean, the media but... needs to get their mind, their, their act together in but general. But she's getting famous off it. Even if it's negative, everybody is talking about this girl. They are. So she's doing something right. I, 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 think, she'll, I think she'll probably look back on this period of time and cringe a little bit. As we all do when we're 21. I mean, if she didn't cringe over her big bows and dance moms, like, you know. I, I just think. All I, the way to the bank, by the way. I, I support anybody who is out and proud doing what they're doing. I Do I think she looked like a WWE fighter in that, that video? <laughs> 100%. I don't know what was going on with those other ways. It just but, doesn't seem sincere to me. If, that, if I felt that she was being sincere and that's who she really was. Like Miley Cyrus did this, you know, total turnaround. Yeah. But it was, it was her being sincere. Yeah, I think this is just an act, and it's it's coming across so cringy because it's like, girl, that's not really you. You're just thinking what you think is cool, or you know. Can I tell you a story? Yes. So, I, when I was 21 years old, I worked on a cruise ship in an acapella quartet, and this was when I was straight. And you I all that gay fun. On I had cruise. a gay best friend named Sly. He was on the boat. Why with do me. you and friends all have the best names? Because Griffin, just, Shane, Sly. Because we got good energy. I don't know. We just attract. It sounds like a porn. Like it's, all these. Oh my god! Names. Where is your mind right now? Have another drink, ma. <laughs> uh, um, no, I. Uh, so I worked under acapella quartet, and I remember meeting this girl on the boat. And by, by the way, before I left for the cruise ship, I had met my gay best friend Sly, and we, he took me to my first gay club, at, at, at which I made out with a guy and went home with that guy and this was the first like he was like what i thought you were straight so then we board a cruise ship six months later and i start dating a girl on the cruise ship i'm 21 and he did not talk to me for like two months and we were on a boat and his reasoning oh which God. i completely understand was like you were not being who you no. true to yourself you weren't this wasn't david like you're fucking gay who is this girl that you're holding hands with up and down the deck of the boat so my point in all that is at 21, I didn't know who the hell I was. I don't know. I don't know JoJo, but maybe she's trying to figure out who that person is. And along the way, you're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna wear crazy outfits. You're gonna get fucked and fucking drunk. You're gonna fucked up, and you're gonna say things that might not necessarily be correct. Like you, obviously, she's not inventing gay pop music. There is a plethora yeah. of artists that have been doing that for many a decade. Mm-hmm. So, to answer your question, I mean, is it cringy? Is it? Is she gonna regret it? Uh, is she doing the right thing? Only she knows that. You know, that was such a good answer. That was such a <laughs> nice answer. I think, but I mean, I'm not trying to be nice. If you know me, I don't try to be nice. But I mean, I just, I just think it's the truth. I think it's the truth. If you were wanting more fodder, I'm sorry I didn't give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> that was fresh. David, what are some of the biggest obstacles facing an independent artist? Money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Money. Um, it's always money, and. Uh, It's wearing different hats. It's trying to raise the money. It's trying to produce, direct, record, find the music, write the music. I mean, if the amount of how I feel like a fucking circus act most days and by the end of it, I'm exhausted, which is another reason why I decided to not drink because I can't do all these things while I'm nursing a hangover, buzzed, drunk, wasted. I just can't. And it's it's uh yeah, it's it's hard. I think the independent artists should be the most like revered artists because we're literally d- grassrootsing this shit, you know? Um I was just thinking about that today. I was I was at the kitchen counter venting to my boyfriend and then we had this epiphany, which I'm glad we had. I I'm always a huge fan of just of just getting it out, right? Yep. Like in a great and just cuz when you hear yourself say things, sometimes you iron it out on your own. And we did it at the kitchen counter this this afternoon and I was like Okay, that makes sense. Because I was just like, you know what? What is it all for? Why am I doing all this? Like, why did I drop I am? You know, why did I spend money on that video? And then you start talking it through and you're like, this is for my own legacy. This is 
this is for me because I love to do it. Like if it wasn't about, if it wasn't a numbers game, why am I doing it? Yeah. Because I love it. And that, that supersedes anything, you know? So yeah, it's hard. It's, it's really difficult though. What has been difficult? We know now money is really like in touring. It's in your appearances. It's not putting all this money and time into an album that gets streamed millions and millions of times. It's not that that means money in your pocket. No. What was that? I don't know. Oh God, is that a ghost from? What was that? That was weird. Did that you all hear so that back weird. home? That was so weird. I don't know. That was like a. Oh. Are my exes coming through? Are they trying Sly, to tell me Griffin, something? Griffin, Shane. <laughs> What's funny because uh, we did start a paranormal podcast in here. Um, yeah, with Derek Jameson, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's my boy. I love him. That's 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 so, that that stuff so scares weird. me. But well, that's for another so, yeah. time time and place. But. All right, let's get a little steamy. Let's talk sexuality. Okay. It seems over the last few years you've become very comfortable with the sexier side of your brand, showing skin. Um, we even saw some full frontal nudity stuff. You did, yeah. Um, and then you did naked boys singing, which is literally a musical on stage, yeah. naked with what f- five other boys? Four other boys. Yeah, there was five Four total. Boys. Yeah. Where did that courage come from, and where was that spark? It's like, yeah, let's embrace this part of me. I, I mean, let's let's go back to you know, I don't know, two thousand and five when I became a stripper to yep. put myself through school, which you were uh, raked over the coals with on American I was Idol. Raked over the coals even with, yeah. How many female contestants had a stripper pass, and that was never nobody cared. Yeah, I know. And now, if you were to say you were a stripper, you'd probably win a damn reality show or win the competition. And you could buy a house on your OnlyFans. And you could buy a house on your OnlyFans. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I've always, I mean, I think I've always been a sex. My mom is a very sexual person. I've always been we're sexual. Latin. We're Latinos. My mom's white though. But oh, she's she is. she is. My mom is white, blonde hair, blue eye. Her name is Spring, like the no season. No way. Yes way. Yeah. But she has only ever dated people of color. Well, because she's smart. So there's that. <laughs> I mean, no offense, Tony. White men are just so boring. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I don't know. I mean, I've dated a handful of white men, and I got to say, some of them know what I'm doing, you know. So, but um, let's not digress. Uh, I've, I've always been a sexual person, mm. and I think that there are ways to do things. And for me... It was the perfect opportunity to do a beautiful nude photo shoot shoots while I was doing a musical that was had just happened to be nude, and it was a comedy. It was fun, and I think I think that was the first time I in a long time since I was shamed on Idol that I was able to say you're like reclaiming it, reclaiming it. Wow. I felt beautiful. I was working so hard on my body, mm-hmm. still am, but I felt like in that moment it was so appropriate, you know, as a thirty something year old man to just be like. Yeah, I love me. This looks, and this looks good, by the way. Like, I don't care what nobody says. You can shame me, but this is my life. And I'm going to, I'm going to immortalize this body in this moment because I don't know if it'll ever look this way again. I'm going to immortalize it in a coffee table book. You're were, welcome. Were you scared at all? Because you know, people are going to open that book and they're yeah. going to be like, okay, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to look at it. I mean, at, at, at the time, I was not scared because I was in this world of like naked boys singing yeah. and it, you know, I was it's like, natural it was just like happens. natural. I was part of a cast and like, I, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> about a year after, I was like, oh my God. Were you really? Well, yeah, because I, w- I forgot the book was out there and then like a fan kind of slid into my DMs and they, you know, they like, Honey, oh, we all looked. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was like, you're a friend, but you know, all looked. you just forget sometimes <laughs> like that. Oh yeah, that happened. Um, so I kind of was like, oh my God. And I had a moment and I'm like, and then I remember the reasons why I did it. And I'm like, no, that still stands. Yeah. I stand by that 100%. It's not like, you know, and kudos to anybody out there doing porn, but it's not like I was like being raunchy or it, cause that wouldn't be me. Right. But I was doing this in a very, I mean, the human body is beautiful. It's an art form. And the photographer is an artist. And I was also respecting his art. Noel Dahl is fucking incredible. It was the first time I ever had someone shoot me like that. I had never seen myself looking like that ever. I mean, yeah, like throughout the years, we've all shot home videos. but, But this was different. This was like, oh, I look good. And then we did little themes with like Christmas and uh, Valentine's Day. And so, so yeah. And, um, and I made great money. (laughs) There you go. Ain't nobody going to take my paper. Was it weird to do a musical (laughs) naked on stage the whole time? It wasn't. 
No. No. The first day when like we rehearsals. had rehearsals, did you start rehearsals naked? No, 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 like, no, no, we didn't. No, it's um, it's funny because the first rehearsal, like dress rehearsal is undress rehearsal. <laughs> it was undress rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, the first like seven days of rehearsal, maybe five days or something, were completely just fully clothed, just going over the libretto and the scripts and everything. And then the the day, I think the last day of rehearsal, um, our producer Tom was like, "Okay, everybody, get naked." And we're and I think for a split second I was like, ooh, like this is yeah. I mean, this is the, all, it was a cast you know, of hot, hot boys. It was a cast of hot men. Um, but once you get up there, it's like you have a job to do. Nobody's yep. thinking about sex in that moment. We're all thinking about lyrics, mm -hmm. blocking choreo. Oh shit! Like don't want it, you know. So it was one of those things where it's like you just and it's just funny and yeah, it was a job and it was fun. I did, yeah. I mean, it was definitely. I mean, not everybody goes to work naked. <laughs> 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 but, but I can just check that. I mean, listen, it's never lost on me that I lead I lead an extraordinary rare life. Like yeah. the things that I've done are crazy. Like, and they're so fun and I'm so grateful. And as much as you know how this goes in entertainment, there's so many pitfalls, but there's so many highs. But we're also not clocking in and no offense to those that yeah. work a nine to five job. Yeah. I, I can't even envision that world for me. Right. It's just so far removed. I don't think I would be great if I had to go in and like meet people every day from nine to five. I'd probably... I would probably, well, I have done it when I was like 19 and I got yeah. fired from every job. <laughs> yeah. I would forget orders. That's when I, sign. I worked at TGI Fridays and I would just sing up and down the hallways and people would be like, is he fucking serious? And like, I would forget orders all the time. And I still forget things now and I'm not even like a server. I can't imagine so. being a waiter. That must be one of the hardest jobs in the world. There's no way that I could do it. I'm I have so not, do you know, I have, I have nightmares about forgetting people's orders. Like I remember having like, they call it in the weeds, right? When you have like eight tables and like, here's the thing. I don't care what you want. <laughs> It's probably, let's start there. I shouldn't be a server because I genuinely don't care if you're having a great dining experience. Like, I actually, like, fuck off. Like, what am I doing here for peanuts? Like, there's other jobs for me. I kind of remember TGI Fridays. I used to go there all the time. In Orange County, there was only two things to do. Go bowling or go to TGI Fridays on the weekends. That, that was it. And see, that sounds fun now. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I kind of bowling and TGI Fridays. It was just like easy going. You know, now yeah. when we go out on the weekend, it's like it's a whole thing. Well, yeah. So, David, talking about sexuality, you know, we're going through such a weird point politically and socially towards the LGBTQ community. Should we be curtailing some of that overt sexuality in order to build bridges with the conservative side? Oh, man. How is that fair, though? You get heterosexual women pandering to straight men with their overtly sexual behaviors or outfits or... I don't. I mean, you know, I, I remember I, seeing of, of uh, movies as kids, and before it was PG and R. There was no like PG thirteen. Right. That's how old I am. And as a kid, I remember seeing so many movies with tits that were just all over the place. Total Recall. Remember the three tits. Hundred percent. But yeah. it was just part of regular movie going experience. Yeah. Well, because it's normal, right? Right. Yeah. And it's like now we're celebrating seeing men's genitalia in film, and it's like it's still a shock. But it's like we've been looking at naked women forever. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of society kind of catching up with itself and opening their their minds to new ideas, right? Of like, man, I just think the human body is so beautiful in general. Like, why Sometimes. can't we just like show it? I mean, you know, Sometimes. to each his own. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, the, the initial question was, do you think we should tone it down? Yeah, because we're being persecuted so much just for the sex part of our lives. Well, I think that there's a healthy balance of all the things, right? We have the people that are overtly sexual. Then we have the ones on, on the other side that are showing that gay people aren't just like fucking, you know, porn and and, and ass fucking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We're, we're showing that, you know, there we're just we're people that happen to be gay and they're and just like a heterosexual person that's into fetishes like you're human. You know, you can't um, you can't just stereotype a group of people based on, you know, a, a portion of what. Uh, they're doing like uh, it's just so silly to me i just can't even believe in 2024 we're still having conversations like that you know it's it's but wild even more and then now there's states where uh, adult websites are re restricted Pornhub is not in six of the uh of, of the u.s states which is crazy to me yeah yeah okay next yeah. hot topic we have is j-lo the media, this is my personal take, the media decided from one day to the next, you know what, her career's over, and we're going to highlight why her career is over, and then now her career is definitely on a downward spiral. Yeah. You've I mean, been a I musician, don't know. and you've been in front of the camera, you've been part of, you know, the creative teams and all that, um, and as a musician, why J-Lo and why, why now? They've always come for J-Lo, though. You know, it, it's this Not whole like thing. Not like this. Not like, well... 
I don't remember exactly, but I, I, they, they've done it with Britney. Yeah, you know, we love to, we love to, to edify these people and yeah. then tear them down. And it's just sort of, up. and like, then Britney build them back, back up. But now she's, back, uh, Britney's back. We're like, oh no, she, she's crazy now. It's like, like we love a good tear down, bring back up yeah. story that we've done ourselves. Like it's, it's pretty sickening. It is. J Lo, um, I think she's. She's incredible, and the fact that she she was one of the first artists that because back in the day when I was first starting off when I had my first record deal, the labels were telling me like you can only do one thing, right? Like you can only be a singer, you can't be an actor. Like stay in your lane. And now it's That's like so she weird. it's so weird because and she's a prime example yeah. of one of the first that I looked up to that was like wait. She sings and she dances and she acts and she has brands and she's like, that's what, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. You know, that's so cool that she can pivot like that. I think she's fucking brilliant. And she has so much stamina, energy. She's about a kick ass woman. Yeah. And then, and I love in her documentary how she's like, sometimes I forget like I'm the oldest one here. <laughs> you know? Because she's going, she going, going. Amazing too. And she looks incredible. Um, I think it's just a classic case of she's in the right place at the right time for everyone to tear her down. I think that just so weird to me. I think from one day to the next. From, they did that with Beyonce too a number of years ago, and Beyonce took a couple of years off. I think J Lo, honestly, she needs to take some time I off. think just like take your man and your money and your kids and just go away well, for a minute. A, a, a divorce. I know. I heard that today too. I don't know how true that is. Is it true? Yeah. Oh yeah. Not shitty. And he's coming out saying that he was not in a right mental state when he married her. And I mean, it's, oh, it's, so it's, it's so sad, but it's literally in my mind from one day to the next, the media decided we don't like JLo. And then we know that her tour was canceled. She says it was to focus on family, but we know the truth was because low ticket sales. But her movie was vilified before it even came out, Atlas on Netflix. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. a huge flop because it told us it was, media told us it was going to be a big flop. Yeah. I just, I, I don't understand pinpointing somebody and tearing them down so much and that we all follow suit. And I mean, we all, I'm using that in, in, in quotes. Yeah, yeah. It's just so weird to me. I, I think it's disgusting, honestly. Yeah. I think if people really knew, if people would consider that she's an actual human being, and Im imagine this, and like right? Said a hard worker. A hard worker. Imagine this. She created an entire album and movie yeah. around this newfound marriage that she's thinking it's going to last. Can you imagine how she feels? Leave her alone. Like now she has to publicly endure the scrutiny and not to mention personally the divorce if that's happening. Leave her alone. Like why do you even have anything to say? Like at least she's like Brene Brown says, like she's in the fucking arena. And if you're not in the arena, I don't care what you have to say. Like J-Lo gets up, dusts herself off and goes to another project. And I think she has another movie coming out. You know, and it's like, just leave people alone. I don't know. I don't know about this obsession with. I remember back in the day when like you like you couldn't see Michael Jackson because he was tucked away in his mansion behind like the mm -hmm. shrubbery and stuff. And now like celebrities like you want to know what they're eating for breakfast and you want to know what they wipe their asses so with. And like yeah. it's like you just want to know too much. You yeah. know, you want to know too much. Leave them alone. Like yeah. let them deal. I guarantee J Lo is not thriving in this current climate of everyone talking shit about her and then megan mccain's comments and shit it's like megan stay in your lane i mean just stop like you're not even on the view anymore relax i, I, I just uh the peanut gallery kills me <laughs> um all right let's talk mental health mental health is also another Woo! issue that we have felt comfortable talking about in the next in, in, in the last decade mm -hmm. you know growing up and you know uh, you just didn't you didn't, didn't didn't talk about it, but you've talked no. very openly Strong arm, yeah. about your dealings with mental issues and, and kind of how you work through that. Can you share a little bit um, about how you came to terms of, yeah, I need to deal with my mental issues and how you actually work through them? Because you do have the ups and downs of an independent career. Yeah. We deal with the body issue pressures from the LGBTQ community. You're in a relationship. And you work with this person as well, kind of like manager yeah, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we collaborate know, a lot. All these pressures. What issues do you deal with? Um, and any advice? Like, is there something that you subscribe to? And like, this really helped me. Well, I mean, I'm I'm newly sober, but I will say that it's in the last like almost forty days now. It's really it's really helped me exponentially. Just have a clear mind and. I have a to-do list that I tackle every day mm -hmm. that might be as simple as, um, you know, make yourself a cup of coffee. You delete know, grinder profile. Delete grinder profile. <laughs> uh, 7.30 a.m. hike. You know, and for me, like crossing In some of morning? those things off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crossing some of those things off is really helpful for me to just kind of... Um, I, I love lists because you feel a little success. You feel when accomplished. You, off. you feel accomplished, yeah. yeah. When you write, and I write it down I, mm -hmm. with hand with a Sharpie on a lined notepad. Yeah. I don't know. I just like writing with Sharpies. Yeah. I like too. how they smell too. And it's so definite. When you write it down, it's it definite. has to happen. Yeah, it has to happen. So, um, I mean, mental health's always been a really tricky thing for me. Uh, I, in, in 2017, 2018 in January, I checked into rehab voluntarily for Xanax. 
because I was on Xanax for 11 to 12 years not knowing that it was a benzo and not knowing that it, it was, was supposed to be the wonder drug. It was supposed to cure everybody. Maybe not not issues. have to overthink and I would sleep yeah. really well until yeah. I didn't. And so uh, I hit rock bottom in uh, New Year's Eve of 2017. Wow. Yeah. And so my dad drove out to LA. He picked me up in his car with his uh-huh. with his wife and drove me to a treatment facility and that's where I stayed for a minute and went to the hospital. There was I mean there's there's other things that happened in between there, but Long, the long and short of it is, is that I've been sober from Xanax since 2018. Wow. And that I thought was the biggest hurdle I'd ever have to kick, not realizing that then would come alcohol and then would come certain sexual behaviors. And, you know, like it's it. I'm an extremist and I'm an addict. Like I I'll do anything. I want the dopamine hit. Like give it to me all the yeah. time, you know, whether it's sweets or food or sex or like give me or more, being, more, more. Or being on stage. Or being on stage. One hundred percent. Yes. And when I get back to my hotel room. I'm just like, it all just is quiet and there's no one there. And I'm like, ah, like, yeah. what is this? Like, everyone would love me for a minute. I loved me for a minute. And now I'm stuck with me by myself in this solitude. And it's like, ah. so I'm learning other ways of navigating other than destructive behavior. That was fresh. I'm in between therapists right now, but I do work a program and there's other people in the program like me that I think has been exponentially helpful in knowing that I'm not alone and knowing that um, this doesn't define like who I am. So mental health is, man, I... I've I've seen a, a few people have some breaks in the last like few months and I've cried with them because I'm like, I know. Muscle memory knows how that feels. Like, and it's, you feel like... I've been in positions in my life before where I was in so much pain that I thought, and I've never been suicidal, but I thought if God were to take me in this moment right now, I would totally get it. I get it. I've abused. I have been fucking rock bottom. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with my life. My body is not my temple at the moment. If he took me right now, it would be fine. I don't feel like that today, but I know what that feels like. So it it gives me empathy and sympathy for people. So when people go through moments like that, I'm like, don't make fun of them. Like, you don't know if you could be that tipping point for that person. Like, 100%. Yeah. So it's it's a delicate it's a delicate uh, topic for me, for sure. And sharing that actually feels super vulnerable, but I know it could help somebody listening. So That's 100%. Yeah. You know, and I think, in certain ways, I think the gay community has gotten meaner, but in certain <laughs> ways, I think we've gotten kinder yeah. in terms of mental health issues, in terms of people choosing to be sober and us supporting them. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's give and take. I, I still think we're pretty mean as, as a community, and I've, well, and I've been part of that, too. You know, speaking of which, like... This whole like caddy culture, people people take it a little too far. You it's know? getting a little tiresome though. It's getting a little like tiresome. Like the real housewives, whatever. I used to watch every iteration of housewives and I'm like, God, we've already seen that and done it. And it's not, you know, we were talking about comedy, like what's funny now. Yeah. If we're doing anti-gay jokes or anti-trans jokes or racist jokes, it's just not funny anymore. It's just not funny. It's easy target and it's Like it's you said earlier, like the, the low-hanging fruit, right? Yeah, like yeah, go for something. Yeah. Come on, be creative. Yeah, you're go, an go, artist. Go for, some, go for something different. It's yeah. already been done before. It's tired. Yeah. Um, what do you think the future of the music industry looks like? Because in my vision or what I see, it's become very gimmicky. Um, it's all about social media. It's all about like Jojo Siwa, her new look, you know. Yeah. And it's like, what about the substance? What about good old fashioned songwriting, real singers? What do you think the future looks like? Man, that's a good question. I, sometimes it worries me because I, I really wish that people would still make incredible albums yeah. with sickening visuals. I think Beyonce's done a great job at doing that. So I'm not a big Beyonce fan. Oh, and I'm not a... How dare you! No, no, but I'm not a country music fan. I... Uh, I'm talking about Beyonce's whole catalog. Like, when she started really doing those, like, with the Beyonce album in 2016, or whenever it was, but she she dropped a video for every single song, and then she came out with Lemonade, and just, like, I think she's kind of, like, went back to sort of the thriller days with MJ, where he would create these bodies of work that, like, from start to finish, you were, like, captivated. Well, so I had to review her... her uh, Cowboy Carter. Yeah. So I was like, I can't review it unless I listen to it at least twice. Yeah. That's a long album, by the it's way. It's a long album. She tells a whole story in there. I sure was does. captivated. Yeah. I was captivated. And there might be certain parts that you miss on there, too, because yep. some of that is the black experience, and 100%. you can't relate to that. 100%. Right? And just like some people li- listen to queer music, and like, I don't really understand that. Like, it's not for you to understand. It's for you to listen and appreciate. Right? And I think that that's 
why I love Beyonce so much is because she's not creating art based on what she thinks people will like. She's doing it for the story and for the art. The art deserves that respect. And I think that that's one thing that's missing from music right now is the respect Ooh. of telling the fucking story. Yeah. I wish that that would happen. There are a handful of artists that still do that. I love Miley Cyrus's new direction. I I will listen to Miley Cyrus forever. Like just the pain and used to be young remember and that first, video. Yes. Oh my God. Like, remember like, when she first started to evolve into a, a woman? Yeah. We were all like, come on, Hannah Montana. Yeah. She's owned the damn thing and she's done. I relate to her now. I relate to her now as a woman. <laughs> 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 no, I, I relate to her more so now as she's evolved and matured yep. than I did when she was Hannah Montana. 100%. You know, um, I, I'm so happy that she's owned this sexual side of her yep. that backs it up with the vocals and the writing. Oh, she's a songwriter at the yep. core. And I think she said in an interview once, she's like, I stopped touring because it takes a toll on my body and I can't function as a songwriter. And that's my number one goal is, this, is to be a songwriter. So um, I don't know where the music industry is going. I think there are some really, really dope artists that are up and coming, but I still have like my old favorites that I'm just, I'm, I'm glad are still kicking and making music that I'm like, yes, like Alicia Keys is one of them. Um, John Legend is another one. Um, I love Ricky Martin. I love Ricky Martin. I think he's such a great, incredible queer artist and a great example of how you can be Latino queer and strong and And he's sexy. become very open about his sexuality, his yeah. foot fetishes and his hooking up with <laughs> random people. Like he's he's very open and, and honest about that. Yeah. So David, how do you maintain a healthy relationship? Because you are so busy and like we said, you do collaborate with your partner. Um and, you know, you being more sexual with your brand, people mm -hmm. are ogling you. People are probably messaging you, DMing you. How do you cultivate a healthy home life with that? Well, I've, man, there's so many there's so many facets of that answer. Because I think, first of all, you have to date somebody who gives you space and the ability to be who you are independently of the relationship. That takes somebody that's um, uh, that they know who they are. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, I think space is one of the healthiest things for a relationship. It really is. And my partner has done, oof, I think, seven or eight years of therapy. So he's he's worked through a lot. I always tell him, I'm like, I would have hate to have known you before therapy. Because <laughs> the Derek that that they knew, I wouldn't even fuck with. Because we're, we're, su we're such, like, we're both Geminis. We're both spicy and fiery. But we do give each other space and there's not any jealousy in the relationship. It's very, he lets me do my thing. Yeah. And then when I, and what's important too is when I come home, like I'm not like David the entertainer, yeah. you know, like out here, like, oh my God, thank you so much. I'm like David the partner. So like, I, I also have to give 50% into this relationship. Oh. So I ask him, how was your day? What can I do to help? I make dinner every night. You know, we, we do those things. And so like, I think, uh, I think also trust is a huge thing too. Yeah. And above all like tough fucking conversations we have tough conversations like literally in the middle of a day something will just be like why did your tone i don't appreciate that okay well that's not how i meant to come off and why are you talking like that and then it'll last for a few minutes but then we come to it okay i'm sorry listen i i had too much coffee i'm irritated somebody pissed me off give me a hug you know mm -hmm. we don't really ever have drop down crazy crazy arguments like we did in the past and that was also always alcohol infused now we just have discussions and they're diff tough discussions, but we get through them. So, and I think that that applies to friendships, to family relationships. Like if you can have the tough conversation, because no one's perfect, right? And if you think your shit doesn't sing, I mean, you have something coming to you. And every you know? relationship has ups and downs. That's just what's going to happen. Yeah, totally. All right, let's talk about your last album, Don't At Me. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, and I know this was probably your most vulnerable album that you have put, it was. put out. Yeah. Don't at me means um, I don't really care what you have to say in the comment section unless you're giving constructive criticism or positive feedback. Don't at me. I really don't care because you're also not in the arena. You're not creating stuff and putting it out there for the whole world to judge. Why do I care what you think? Don't waste your time. I'm just going to delete your comment or ignore it. Does that make you feel better, sir? <laughs> Ma'am? You know, and I've been dealing with that since 2008. Um, well, I mean, even before when I was a kid, right? Yeah. Social media wasn't around then, but that... So that's what Don't At Me meant. And it, it I, I didn't even intend on that being the album name until I recorded the song Don't At Me. And in the song Don't At Me, as you know, I'm just like talking shit in that song. <laughs> and I recorded that during my Naked Boy singing <laughs> era, so I really didn't give a shit about what anyone was saying. And I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I put it out there. Because that's one of my most favorite songs. And I also, like, I'm in the lower register of my voice, and I do this vocal fry thing that I had never done before. 
Um, and yeah, and that, and then I talk about mental health with when it rains, it pours yeah. vices talks about alcohol abuse. Um, uh, goosebumps talks about my relationship with my partner and how I'm crazy, but you still give me goosebumps. So sorry about that. Not sorry. Um, and then, uh, and then miss you talks about like my grandmother, my late grandmother, whose photo is still by my nightstand today. I miss her so much all the time. It's so, it's weird how someone could stay with you that long, you know, and, it, and she'll always stay. Oh, I get teared up thinking about it. And I know that Girl, with your mom, you're talking you know, every, yeah. yeah. And that'll always be in it's it, every day. It's a constant, constant, um, you know, they say, you know, time heals everything. It's, the grief does not go away. Time doesn't heal everything. Time just gives you a little bit more strength to deal with us with it. That's hundred percent. But it's with you every single day, every day. And some days it's a bright light and some days it's a dull pain. 100%. Yeah. hundred percent. And I, I don't know. I don't know what it's like losing a parent yet. Knock on wood. And I, and I don't even pretend to know what that's like. So my heart goes out to you because I can only imagine. Jeez, why am I tearing up right now? Damn it. <laughs> but so Miss You deals with that and deals with, and, and during the pandemic, we lost a lot of people and um, it's just, you know, forever just emblazoned in your heart, you know, and that's, that's, uh, yeah. So this album was, yeah, I don't even listen to that album lately. Really? No. There's I don't like so going, much. I don't like going back. I don't know. And ironically enough, I went back with I am, but like I am is like a positive uplifting. But like you owned it and you just like reinvented the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. With don't at me, it's kind of like, okay, that was, we did that. That's there. I got it out of my system. Yeah. And maybe sometimes when I'm feeling like, uh, like a masochist and self deprecating, I'll go put on my headphones and sit in a dark room <laughs> and listen to that intro. Um, but, you know, I think there's a healthy amount of like going back and like unearthing some of those um, things that hurt you, but then gently putting them back where they belong and mm-hmm. covering them with soot <laughs> and a little bit of water and then pounding those motherfuckers yeah. down. And some garlic. It's like you will not, and some gar- you will not come out. <laughs> you will not come for me. Yeah. No, not again, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looking back, what has been one of your proudest moments in your career? Not because it was a huge commercial success or because you got the most press, but because for you personally, it was a huge obstacle that you worked through or overcame or pre- presented. Oh, man. Uh, probably probably going through that rehab situation in, yeah. 20, in 2018. I had no clue. Yeah. Yeah, that was tough. I, I didn't I didn't know that if I would make it out alive out of that because I went through like a whole psychosis thing. And um, yeah, I had to cancel a lot of stuff too. And it's funny that that sticks in my mind. I had to cancel gigs as if that's like, that's you know. that's your bread and butter too. And plus yeah. that's your artistic expression as well. I yeah. mean, I've seen you on stage. You're not just doing a performance. You are up there you're just, creating art as I'm like having it. an exorcism no, on stage. Literally, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's one of my proudest moments, and also another one was learning how to um, how to like record myself during the pandemic, and then recording "Don't At Me" that album. That was really cool to to be to be like in my to speak my truth and talk that shit without care. It takes a it takes a a lot of balls to to say what you really mean and not know if it's going to be commercially successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never been as successful as some of the people I idolize, but I'd like to think that I've done a handful of things that are worth remembering. Um, and that was one of them for me, whether it got streams or whether it got notoriety, like I, that was a very powerful story for me to tell. And sometimes we need to put art out just to get it out of our system and yeah. work through it, regardless of if it's a huge hit. It does take a lot of balls and we've seen your balls. <laughs> <laughs> going to drive that one home. <laughs> drive the balls home. All right. I just have to know, um, in wrapping up, uh, what is your message to your fans this Pride season? Um, be super, super gay, y'all. Just be unapologetically queer as hell. I mean, if you think about that we're just like organic beings sitting on a big fucking ball of gas and it's just like spitting at an incredible rate and one day we're just going to die. We have like one little drop in the timeline of Earth. Why are we caring so much, right? And I'm guilty of it too. I was watching this clip um, from the Golden Girls where they're all sitting around and Dorothy's like uh, talking about a chocolate cake and Blanche is like, where's the chocolate cake? She's like in the refrigerator. And then Dorothy, uh, or um, um, what's her name? The um, Rose. Yes, yep. Rose. She was just like, oh, we have to watch our figures or something. And then Blanche is like, so you mean to tell me that we're going to starve ourselves to being like real thin and then one day just fall over dead on our faces? She's like, <laughs> It's fucking crazy. And she goes and she gets the cake out of the refrigerator and she sets it down and they just go off. 
and that's such a great metaphor. It's like, why are we like, oh my God, if you look back at, uh, at the, at the litany of things that made you worry and stress out about, and the most of them were like what other people are going to think. And then you look back and like all those things came to pass. And like, no matter what the people thought, it, it still ended up the way it was supposed to. It's just a huge waste of time. Yep. Right. Yep. I think the older you get, you start to realize, fuck it. That's the easiest way to put it. Fuck it. Yep. Okay. It's going to work out the way it's going to work out. As long as you're happy with it, yeah. you know, yeah. and fuck what everyone else says. And I mean, and there's a healthy amount of caring you should do, but from like a, maybe three people in your life that you trust, yeah. the rest of it's just, it doesn't really matter. And don't ask too many people for opinions. Just ask one or two and then listen to your gut. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. David, you have been so open and honest and, uh, what a great chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so vulnerable and open. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, where do you want people to find and follow you? Um, well, not my home. Thank you. <laughs> Please don't come there and hide in the bushes. He cannot uh, host. <laughs> I cannot. I do not host. I have a yappy dachshund chihuahua. I have a chihuini and he does not like guests. But he doesn't bite, though. I shouldn't say that. He bites. He's a rabid dog. Um, Instagram at D Hernandez Music. Uh, same thing for X and threads and all that jazz and stuff. But I'm more, I think, active on Instagram and, and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much but check out the new video youtube and official david hernandez.com is the website yep. all the tour dates are coming up i'm excited about next month that we'll be doing together in hillsborough oregon and out at the that fair out today. yeah we're gonna be in oregon y'all oregon <laughs> woo uh, or and, yeah and, and th that's where they filmed like twilight or something so, did they really yeah in hillsborough all trees and stuff oh, wow. i'm assuming i mean i know it was in oregon we'll have to assuming. recreate the twilight yeah. moment well you're going in and then you're like leaving the same like the next morning yeah yeah hmm. we got shit to do yeah, we got we got to make moves. I, I got to see what these Oregonian boys are like. You, yeah, I mean, are you gonna stay for a few days? Uh, just like two. Okay. But you know, so this is you so, might get into some trouble out there, Alexander. This is so silly. In Portland, there's two gay strip clubs, and because of state laws, they can be fully nude. Oh. Yeah. So. Well, maybe I should think about extending my trip a little bit. Maybe you should make like a pop up uh, appearance. A pop, <laughs> a pop up, no mm. pun intended. <laughs> you just pop up. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you so much, David, uh, for thank joining you. us. Um, it's always a grab bag of fun here every weekend on The Rocks. Big thank you to our engineer and uh, station owner, Tony Sweet. Our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez. Coming up, we have author and producer of AMC's interview with the vampire. Christopher Rice is coming in. And one of my favorite all-time actresses, she's that Persian woman with that smoky, deep voice, um, Shoray Agdushlu is how you say her last name. Please like, share, and subscribe uh, so we can continue bringing this show coming to you for free. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy. And if you drink, stay tipsy. And if you don't drink, stay sober. All right. <laughs> this has been another episode of On The Rocks. Tweet me and slide into my DMs on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at OnTheRocksRadioShow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week.